Thomas the Tank Engine has worked on his branch line for many years. There is nowhere in the world Thomas would rather be than here, on the island of Sodor. After finishing pulling a train one day, a passenger approached Thomas. Tremendous ride we had today. Say, what's your name? Thomas. Well, Thomas, this was a secret, but I work for a newspaper on the mainland. I'm going to write all about you and your branch line. Thomas was pleased. I'm going to be a celebrity. Oh, I spent nine days on Sodor exploring the railways and scenery. But nowhere was more beautiful than the branch line of one smart-looking tank engine called Thomas. The locals say he knows everyone there, and everyone knows him. My question is, why didn't I know about him? Sir Topham Hatt, his controller, is missing a golden opportunity to share his little engine with the world. Rodney, why haven't we ever sold any toys of Thomas? Because we don't make toys, sir. Clearly we should. Soon a new toy factory had gone up on Sodor. Lots of people went there to work. Men came to take lots of pictures of Thomas. What's this all for, sir? For reference, of course. Thomas didn't understand. The factory began to produce lots of cargo, which engines delivered across the island to toy shops far and wide. Thomas didn't know what was going on until Sir Topham Hatt finally told him. These toys are of you, Thomas. That doesn't look anything like me. Yeah, it's just a prototype. I'm thinking about taking off some of the paint. Cheaper that way. Thomas sighed. He knew Sir Topham Hatt was an expert when it came to business. The Thomas toys were selling faster than they could be made. Children from all over the world had fallen in love with Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Who are all these people? Fans of yours. They travelled all the way from Japan to be here. People in Japan adored Thomas. So Topham Hatt didn't say anything, but he agreed to have a replica of Thomas built for a railway there. The toy factory became so busy that Sir Topham Hatt had to build a second one, just to keep up with orders. The other engines were becoming very fed up with Thomas's success. When do we get a turn? They would ask. Thomas had no answer, and quite wished the attention would go to someone else. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived with big news. Thomas, remember what you always used to say about wanting to see the world? Um, I think so, but I, I only meant that- oh, I've had a brilliant idea. There are so many children all over the world that want to see you. I've made arrangements for you to go on a world tour. Your first stop will be London, England where you'll deliver a train filled with your toys to hundreds of happy children. Now doesn't that sound wonderful? And again, Thomas had no answer. The day of the event, Thomas was loaded up with a train of all sorts of toys. He missed Annie and Clarabel. They had been left behind in a shed, and his branch line had been left behind too. Thomas felt depressed. The sun shone vibrantly as Thomas made his way to the mainland. He went under tunnels, over bridges and through valleys before finding his way to the big station. A huge crowd had formed. There was a platform where Thomas intended to end up, but he never made it. His driver didn't know where to stop. The entire event had been planned so quickly that there was hardly any plan at all. Thomas tried to apply his brakes, but he had no sticking power left. He skidded past the platform and demolished the buffers. His train derailed and sent boxes and crates high into the air. Everyone screamed as tiny Thomas's rain from the sky like cerulean missiles. Thomas! 
almost bonked me on the head, cried a little girl next to a shattered pile of blue plastic. The children didn't want to see Thomas anymore. Now they were scared of him. Thomas was sent for repairs and went back to work on his branch line. Are you getting on well, Thomas? Oh, I am, sir. Glad to be back where I belong. I wanted to say that I'm sorry about what happened. I got carried away with greed. My factory went out of business after you scared all those children. Which was my fault. It's okay, sir. You didn't seem happy at all. I thought you always said you wanted to see the world. Oh, I, I was only ever talking about the island of Sodor. My branch line is my whole world. I don't belong anywhere else. Good engine. Go on then, have a rest. Hmm. Oh, I should probably get in touch with those folks in Japan. Thomas, da. <laughs>